Hey everybody, welcome back to my Star Wars channel. Today we're gonna learn how to play the Mandalorian Monopoly game. We would be honored if you would join us. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. Hey, uh, gonna do another game tutorial. Done a couple here on the channel and uh, I love games, I love board games. And so uh, having Star Wars games kind of helps with the whole like immersion uh, feeling like you're in the universe feels. <laughs> and so I got uh, the Mandalorian Monopoly for Christmas. Uh, I think the first thing I want to say is uh, it's this version. So if you're in the stores and you're looking at them, I'm reviewing the one that looks like this. It's a square box. It's silver. It says the Mandalorian. I think there's another one that looks more like a regular Monopoly uh, game board where it's long, like rectangle shaped, and it has more cartoony uh, drawings on the outside. That is not this. And I think there's another one that's a baby Grogu Monopoly, I think. Um, so just, just to be clear, we're looking at this one, okay? And so we're gonna bust open the box, take all the pieces out, go through the rules quickly, right? I don't like long game tutorials because I know you'll be able to figure it out on your own once you get started. So we're not gonna go into everything super detailed, right? But this is just enough to kind of uh, show you what's inside the box and how it goes. And I, ha I can say uh, my family and I, we've played this a couple of times since Christmas and we really do enjoy it. All right, let's get to the game tutorial. Inside the outer box is this inner box that's more like an actual game box that's shaped like uh, Mando's chest plate but I prefer to leave it in the outer box because, well, I like the packaging. All right, let's take everything out of the box, set up this board game, and teach you how to play The Mandalorian. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna set up your game board, and then each player is gonna pick one of the four silver pieces to be their character. No, you cannot pick the troopers, you can't pick Grogu, and you can't pick Moff Gideon. More on that later. Next, you're gonna give everybody their credits. Those are your, these are your dollar bills, right? These is, this is your money. And so every player is gonna get five of these 10 credit chips, and each player is gonna get two of these 50 credit chips. The community chest cards are called signet cards. You're gonna shuffle all of these, and you're gonna place them right here on the square that has the signet icon. Next, you're gonna put all the extra characters in place, and so Grogu, is gonna go right over here on just visiting. Next, you're gonna place this white stormtrooper right over here on this Imperial Advance circle. And this dark trooper piece is gonna go all the way across the table from the white stormtrooper, and he's gonna go on that Imperial outpost. Which means Moff Gideon is gonna go on the last one, which is the one directly in the fold of the board. Now we're gonna put out the Stormtrooper and Dark Trooper cards and the Moff Gideon card. The Moff Gideon card goes right in the middle of all of these. Now you're gonna put out the Stormtroopers and Dark Troopers depending on how many uh, players are playing your game. So he will go into the pile if there's four players. He will go into the pile if there's two players or three players or four players. So this number means at least two. Okay, at least two. So he will go in the pile if there's at least three playing. So three players or four players. He will go in the pile if there is four players only. He will go in the pile if there's two players, three players, or four players, okay? So it has to be at least, at least this number. You're gonna shuffle those and you're gonna make a pile here and here. Now make sure each player has a character card that goes with their token. And make sure they read their character card because each person has unique abilities that will affect gameplay. It's almost like you have your own set of rules. I remember the first time we played this, we almost ignored uh, the text on this. And you don't wanna do that because this is really gonna help you in the game. And like I said, everybody has their own unique abilities. Like for instance, Ahsoka says, if you have Grogu when battling an enemy, you may re-roll both dice, but you must use the second roll. And that's a unique ability that only she has. These last cards are the hideout cards and they're color coordinated with the places on the game board. And of course, these would be uh, similar to the properties that you would have in a regular Monopoly game and you will treat them the same way. 
So for instance, at the bottom of Hideout Docking Bay, rent is 50 credits. But if you have the entire color set, then rent is 100 credits. So you're going to play very similar to Monopoly, but you are only going to roll the silver die. And the silver die will tell you uh, where to move. If you have the Grogu token, then you will roll both dies. And just like Monopoly, you're going to move the amount of spaces that your die rolls, and then you will do exactly what the board says, either buying property or taking cards. If you land on these, indicated by the arrows moving to the left, these are called unexpected allies. And if you land here, you get to teleport to the first unsold property. If you happen to land on an Imperial outpost, you will then roll the silver die and you'll move that character that many of spaces. This first move into the field of play counts as one move. And of course, the Imperials do not obey the rules of the board. If you land here on the Signet Square, of course, that means you will take one of the Signet cards. You'll either do exactly what it says or the card will indicate that you can save this for a later use. If you should land on a square where Grogu is, or you pass him, you automatically take him and he becomes part of your party. You will then use his die and roll it, and you will also get his character card. Having Grogu alongside you is an advantage because his special ability is you get to roll both dice when battling an enemy. If you land on a space with an Imperial enemy, then you must battle. You'll draw one of the cards in the center and follow the rules of combat. For instance, if you battle this Stormtrooper, you have to roll a three or higher to win. And if you win, you get to draw two Signet cards, keep one and return the other to the bottom of the deck. And if you lose, you will pay 10 credits to the bank. And you're gonna find a lot of the rules transfer over from a standard game of Monopoly. The first of which being, if you are the last one standing, right? And if you have the Monopoly, of course you win. Another way to finish the game is to defeat Moff Gideon. Once Moff Gideon is defeated, the game is over. And of course the person with the most property and money wins the game. However, you can also lose the game. If Grogu is left unattended and he's passed by a trooper, then the trooper scoops Grogu up and everyone loses. Of course, keep your rulebook handy. There's rules about Grogu, battling, what you can do if you can't pay deals and trades in the end of the game. Make sure this is uh, close by, but trust me, you won't need it for very long. All right, that's the Monopoly game. And so I think anyone who likes Star Wars, especially if you like Star Wars and you like Monopoly uh, and the Mandalorian series, right, uh, would love this. I love all the elements that make this the same as Monopoly, because we have the Fortnite Monopoly game, and it's so much different than Monopoly. So much different. But this kind of feels like there's still some Monopoly aspects to it, and if there was ever like a question about like, oh, what should we do? We just, we just defaulted to the standard Monopoly rules, and it worked great, and it does take a little less time than a standard Monopoly game. You know how some of those get, you know, pretty crazy. Uh, and uh, we liked it just as much as some of our other uh, special edition Monopoly sets. And even though my wife isn't totally into Star Wars, she's not totally into Mandalorian and Boba Fett and all that, but she liked it too. So I can definitely say uh, it was good for the whole family. My eight-year-old also was able to stick through it. You know, that's not always the case with some games. Uh, sometimes he checks out early and he's like, I'm bored of this game, I'm done. And he kind of wanders off. It might be because he likes Mandalorian, he likes Star Wars, but I, I think the game was simple enough for him to understand. And uh, when it's somebody else's turn, it's not exactly boring. You know, some little kids, they really don't care when it's somebody else's turn, right? So uh, I think this made it fun for the entire family. Hey, and once again, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I just review and talk about things in the Star Wars universe that relates to me. That's why it's called my Star Wars channel. So whether it's a movie or a book or it's uh, building an X-Wing model or dressing up as Kylo Ren, uh, these are all the things that are in my world. And so I am definitely a lover of the franchise. I love everything there is about Star Wars. You'll never hear me hate on anything. There's only positive vibes here on the channel. That, and that includes Disney and George Lucas and the prequels and everything else. So if you like positive vibes, if you love Star Wars, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and follow. And I'll see you guys next time. May the force be with you.